The Midrashic analysis of Lot's daughters largely focuses on why they become impregnated by Lot and what the effects of this deed are. In opposition to the biblical portrayal, the rabbis turn the blame on Lot for this incestuous action. They argue that Lot exhibits selfish and harmful behavior throughout his life. One Midrash argues that the daughter's relations with their father are punishment for his choices, while another says that he secretly desired his daughters. The sympathetic Midrashic analysis of the daughters seems to be due to the ancestral connection between the daughters and Ruth. In Genesis 19, Lot and his family flee Sodom after being warned by angels of the impending destruction of the city and the neighboring city Gomorrah. While the angels warned them not to look back, Lot's wife turns back to gaze upon the destruction and is subsequently turned into a pillar of salt. Genesis 19 verse 26. Now left with only his two daughters and frightened by the experience, Lot removes himself and his daughters from the city of Zoar, to which they escaped, to live in a cave in the hills away from any civilization. Lot's daughters are concerned about their solitude and the possibility of preserving humanity, so they decide to get their father drunk and have intercourse with him with the goal of getting pregnant. Genesis 19 verses 31-33 And the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old and there is not a man on earth to come into us after the manner of all the world. Come, let us make our father drink wine and we will lie with him so that we may preserve offspring through our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she rose. The concerns of the elder daughter, who is the only one of the two daughters to speak, are twofold. Their father is old and may die soon, and that there are no other men available besides him with whom they could conceive children. Although it is not clear whether the daughters think that they are indeed the last three humans or whether they simply do not have access to other men, they certainly do not take their father into their counsel. The verb used by the older daughter for giving their father wine also means to irrigate the ground. Thus, the daughters do not simply intend to pour their dad a glass of wine, but to fully saturate him, that is, get him very drunk before having sex with him. The next night, the younger daughter follows suit. Genesis 19, verses 34-36. On the next day, the firstborn said to the younger, Look, I lay last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also. Then you go in and lie with him, so that we may preserve offspring through our father. So, they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger rose and lay with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she rose. Thus both the daughters of Lot became pregnant by their father. The description of the daughters as inebriating their father in order to carry out their plan emphasizes Lot's passive role in the seduction. Given the daughter's initiative here, it is not surprising that they name the sons born from these illicit unions. What is in a name? The eldest daughter names her son Moab, which means from my father, explicitly pointing to the union as an incestuous one. The younger names her son Ben-Ami, which means son of my clan, a more veiled reference to the situation. While the names of the sons are descriptive of their conception, they serve a negative ideological function for Israel's neighbors and frequent enemies, the Moabites and the Ammonites. This ideology does not reflect overtly on how the narrative portrays the two daughters or Lot, although it does serve to demean them indirectly. Lot was less drunk than he appeared. According to the Midrash, Lot is not without fault in the situation. Even though Genesis 19 verse 33, especially through the use of the verb, literally irrigate, seems to remove any blame that may be placed on Lot based on his drunkenness. However, Genesis 51 8 states that while Lot was drunk when his first daughter lay with him, he was sober enough to know when she got up. This is based on a peculiarity in the Hebrew text of which includes a superlunar dot on top of the vav in the word when she arose. The end justifies the means. The rabbi's concern with royal and messianic lineage prompts them to reinterpret this incest stories in a more positive light. It is justified because of the lineage it provides, leading to Ruth and through her to King David and the Messiah. The other half of David's lineage is similarly problematic. Tamar secures offspring by surreptitiously seducing her father-in-law, and their son Peretz becomes the ancestor to Boaz and thus David. The positive reimagining of Lot's daughters is in line with what we know about the treatment of the larger biblical narrative in Genesis. Its concern is to idealize the narrative past of Israel in order to highlight the royal and messianic trajectory of God's people, all of which is in line with God's will. As part of this tendency, Genesis redeems the story of Lot's daughters because they will lead to the eventual messianic redemption of the Jewish nation. Lot's daughters, in contrast, are treated sympathetically. The Midrash observes that, by strict law, the daughters deserve to be burnt by fire for having lain with their father. But the Holy One, blessed be he, who knows man's thoughts, judges them by their thoughts and not their deed. 
The daughter's true intent was not to lie with their father, on whom they had no sexual designs, but to save the world from total devastation. The daughters thought that the entire world had been laid waste, as had happened during the flood, since they saw no living souls wherever they went. They did not know that only Sodom had been destroyed. They said, The Holy One, blessed be He, has rescued us so that the world will exist through us, so that the human race shall continue. The Holy One, blessed be He, knew their honest minds and good thoughts and rewarded them for their actions. Accordingly, when He commanded, No Ammonite or Moabite shall be admitted into the congregation of the Lord. Deuteronomy 23 verse 4 This prohibition against intermarriage applies only to the males and not to the females. The underlying reason for the sympathetic treatment of the daughters of Lot apparently stems from Ruth the Moabites tracing her lineage to them, and the subsequent descent of King David, and eventually of the Messiah, from Ruth's marriage to Boaz. According to the Midrashic account, when Lot was commanded to rescue his two daughters from the destruction, the angels already foresaw that Ruth the Moabite and Naamah the Ammonite would descend from them. In addition, when scripture tells of the incestuous act by the daughters of Lot, who say, that we may preserve seed from our father. Genesis 19 verse 34. It uses the word zera, seed or offspring in a more general sense, and not son, since the intent of the Holy One, blessed be he, was related to the Messiah. Thus, from a historical perspective, this act was essential for the future advent of the Messiah. The angels, after leading Lot and his family outside the city limits of Sodom, tell him again to flee. Lot, fearful something bad will happen to him in the mountains, requests from the angels that his family be allowed to flee instead to the nearby small town of Zoar. His impulsive request is granted. God, shortly after the family enters Zoar, destroys the sinful cities of the plain with fire and brimstone. Genesis 19 verse 24. During the destruction, Lot's wife looks back at the sinful cities and is turned into a pillar of salt. Fear leads to sin. The stay of the family in the city of Zoar was likely not very long. He soon leaves the city and heads for the mountains, Genesis 19.30. He then finds a cave to live in. It is then that the older sister tells the younger one the following. The daughters then proceed to get their father Lot drunk with wine, then have sex with him. They do such a good job at getting him inebriated that he does not know what they are doing to him, Genesis 19 verses 33-35. The two women become pregnant and eventually give birth to boys named Moab, father of the Moabites tribe, and Benami father of the Ammonites. It certainly seems the young women panicked when they were at the cave with their father. This may have led to their confused thinking, which led them to make conclusions that were not accurate, which were then used to justify their impulsive reaction to the situation. The Bible states that the daughters justified having sex with Lot because they believed all men were dead. Genesis 19.31 This, however, shows they acted impulsively. They forgot they left the city of Zoar, which surely had some men in it even after God had completed punishing Sodom and the surrounding cities. Genesis 19.29, 30. On the surface, the desire of the daughters to continue the human race after Sodom and Gomorrah is certainly noble. Their behavior, however, was based far more on their skewed thinking brought on by fear and panic. As for Lot, he sinned willingly but not willfully. He succumbed to human nature and allowed himself to be put in a compromising situation. Thank you for watching. Like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe.